Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies SOFI stock and how this author believes that the stock price could surge by 25 times over the next 8 to 10 years. Then we're going to move on and talk about Palantir's PLTR stock and how Homeland Security has actually renewed and extended their partnership agreement with Palantir Technologies, which is fantastic news. From then on, we're going to go over and talk about NIO's NIO stock and how various Chinese stocks are actually falling right now, including this electric vehicle maker stock, which is NIO. From then on, we're going to go over and talk about Michael Burry saying that he's not shorting Tesla stock right now or their TSLA shares, but that he should be betting against Tesla, which is neither here nor there. However, Michael Burry definitely thinks that a giant recession and a stock market crash is on its way, so I'm really interested to see what stock he is shorting and what stocks that he is betting on, but apparently he's not betting against Tesla, so we're going to dive into that news. Then lastly, we're going to go over some of his predictions regarding the white-collar jobs bubble that we are in right now, and when it bursts, we could go into a full-on negative recession and a stock market crash. So, if you want more videos like this one on stock market news updates or more videos on SoFi, Palantir, Tesla, or what billionaires are buying, such as Michael Burr, during times of stock market uncertainty. Remember to go and smash that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, let's jump right into today's stories. So, of course, we're going to start off talking about SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol S-O-F-I, and this company basically operates as a digital bank by giving their consumers an all-in-one inclusive digital app, which gives them access to anything they could probably need in terms of financial services and or financial products. SoFi Technologies is a fintech company company or a financial technology company and they are extremely innovative to the point where their SoFi stock price currently trades for $5.15 per share. However, analysts believe the company is worth anywhere between $7 and $11 per share, which means that according to analysts' predictions, the current stock price of $5.15 is somewhat undervalued right now. Now, for this particular article, I want to highlight three major points that we're going to go into. The first point is I do not like Luke Lango because because he is not a good analyst or stock reporter. He tends to hype up stocks just to sell them later on, and he rips off a lot of investors. I don't like his analysis, I don't think his analysis is accurate, and I think he's misleading various investors who are very impressionable. Another thing we're going to touch on is that there is no way that the SoFi share price will surge by 25 times over the next 8 to 10 years. I also lastly want to highlight and go over how this is actually an old article. Even though it says that it was only posted around four hours ago by Luke Lango on Investor Place, this is just not true. This is actually an older article that I've already analyzed back in the day where it said that it could surge by 10 times. And now he's saying that it could surge by 25 times over the next 10 years. And I'm going to highlight various portions of this article that actually verify that this is old news and that he's just reposting articles because he's running out of ideas for SoFi stock because there's no way it's going to surge by 25 times. Now, with that being said, I want to make it clear and transparent that I do own SoFi Technologies in my personal portfolio. I have around 4% allocation, but I just don't agree with his analysis. He's overly bullish on this company. I personally think SoFi is worth anywhere between $10 to $15 per share over the next 12 months, but let's see what he thinks. So, to put this into perspective, the current stock price is trading at $5.15 with a market cap of $4.75 billion. But for this company to surge by 25x over the next 8 to 10 years, and I'll tell you why I'm saying 8 to 10 years later in the video, that would mean that in the next 10 years or the next decade or less, the company would be worth around $118.75 billion, which is way higher than a lot of even legacy banks. So there's no way this newer fintech company is going to make up that amount of ground in that short amount of time. It's just not plausible in my personal opinion. I know how a lot of people are saying saying that SoFi is the Amazon of finance, and they do have a slight point there. However, there's no way we could accurately compare SoFi to a company such as Amazon.
The reason I say eight to 10 years is because this article highlights that by 2030, and remember it's already 2022, that the stock price could rise for SoFi shares by 25 times from their current levels. So that's why I say eight to 10 years, because from now until then is eight to 10 years, or rather just less than 10 years. So that's what I'm gonna run with for this article. But now I wanna kind of pick apart his logic here. He says that there are tons and dozens of stocks that could surge by 10x or 20x in the market right now. And he says that SoFi is perhaps the best opportunity for such an innovative company. Now, I half agree with him. I do think SoFi is a fantastic growth stock. I do think it's somewhat undervalued right now, but there is no way it's even going to 10x in the next 10 years. And I'll tell you why once we go over his actual math for this company, which is absolutely ridiculous. SoFi has been crushed lately over the past year in terms of their stock price because fintech companies, growth stocks, and technology stocks have been liquidated due to the negative macroeconomic environment environment and investors trying to prepare their portfolio for stock market volatility. And that means selling companies that are more on the risky side, such as technology and growth stocks or fintech companies. However, he still believes that by 2030, the SoFi stock price will surge by 25 times. And if you're saying, oh, well, he doesn't really mean that. He just thinks that it's going to surge a lot by then. No, that's not what he says. He even says that, no, that's not hyperbole. He's not exaggerating here. That's their honest opinion, and that's where I just completely disagree and want to disregard his article. And now, it's not like all of his analysis or this entire article is wrong. He does highlight some competitive advantages that SoFi has over their peers and legacy banks, but I would say that right now, SoFi is basically competing with other companies and other banks such as Ally Bank or other fintech companies in a similar space who also offer various investment products credit cards and overall education. But luckily, SoFi does this all digitally, very similarly to Ally Bank. But where do I actually separate from the author of this article? Well, he says that SoFi stands superior with a clear competitive advantage. And I agree with him. Yes, they do have a good technological advantage compared to brick and mortar and legacy banks. However, in terms of their overall numbers that they are bringing in, there's no way it's going to 25x. Another thing I want to point out that this is an old article is that his numbers are all wrong. These are old numbers. For instance, he says SoFi has 3.5 million active users and members on their platform, where the most recent statistics are over 4 million on their platform. So clearly, this is an older article that he has reposted while SoFi stock is falling just to reinvigorate investors and people that are just going to lean on every single word he says by buying more SoFi stock. There's a reason why I only have a 4% allocation to SoFi, and that's because this is a risky growth company. And I'm going to move on to other companies that give me a better risk to reward ratio during times of macroeconomic uncertainty, because this is a time where I'm buying stocks that are blue chip stocks or value stocks or stocks that are going to give me a very good dividend. He also rightfully highlights that they have a good management team and they also have employees that used to work for Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, JP Morgan, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet, Meta Platforms, Netflix, and a lot of others. So this is very good and I do like their overall management and their employees that work for them. But again, there is no way it's going to increase by 25 times. And this is where we're going to start getting into the math here. So remember, he says, and he even highlights the math to 25 25x gains in SoFi stock. So remember, he has 25x right here. And then literally in the first sentence, he lowers a 25x to only a 20x. That's already a huge problem. But now let's go deeper and look into the math. First, he starts off with a radical assumption that SoFi is going to have a 20% penetration in their overall market. And just to put this into perspective, that is absolutely unequivocally false. There's no way SoFi is going to have a larger market penetration or market share than legacy banks and banks like JP Morgan or Charles Schwab or Bank of America or other banks such as those that have been around the block for quite a while who have extreme backing from very wealthy and influential individuals. So there is no way we're going to start off by saying that he's wrong with a 20% market penetration. His other number 
numbers are also absolutely extremely inflated, but remember, he went from a 25x, and then in the first sentence, he dropped down to a 20x, and then at the end of the math, it's only a 17.11x. So again, he is literally lowering his overall potential growth for this company by leaps and bounds, which is really not that encouraging. And then he reiterates that he says that the stock has 25x potential from its current levels. So he's literally contradicting himself. It's either that he doesn't know what he's talking about, or he does know what he's talking about, and he's intentionally misleading investors who are impressionable and who follow him. And that's why I always advocate for only a 5% initial allocation into risky growth companies, because from that point on, you're actually taking on unnecessary risk. You're better off by moving on to another sector or another stock that's going to give you fantastic growth. But overall, I do like SoFi Technologies, but I want to make investors aware not to chase every single dream or every single stock that some reporter is saying could 25x or even 10x over the next 8 to 10 years. That's a very low time frame for a company to actually 25x. That's absolutely ridiculous. Even a gigantic blue chip companies that we see now did not 25x in the span of 8 to 10 years. Anyway, Hopefully you all understand that his analysis is completely misleading, that I am bullish on SoFi Technologies, I own SoFi Technologies, but I want you all to practice proper risk management and not overexpose yourself to single risky growth stocks, especially during this negative macroeconomic environment with high inflation and increasing interest rates. But with that being said, let's jump over and talk about Palantir Technologies and their PLTR stock. If you didn't know, Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial clients as well as government enterprises. The current PLTR PLTR share price trades for $7.61, while analysts believe the company is worth anywhere between $6 and $20 over the next 12 months. The reason why Palantir Technologies is in the news right now is because they have actually announced today that the Department of Homeland Security has renewed their contract in terms of Palantir supporting their Homeland Security investigations with investigative case management software, to where the contract is worth $95.9 million over the next five years. So this is very, very good news. I want to highlight what this particular unit of Homeland Security does, the Homeland Security Investigations Unit, or the HSI. And to do this, I'm going to quote directly from this Business Wire article, which says, and I quote, HSI's core mission includes combating human trafficking and child exploitation, dismantling international drug trafficking organizations, disrupting cyber criminals, preventing identity and benefit fraud, and the investigation of international war crimes, end quote. So this is clearly a giant contract for Palantir. It shows just how much Homeland Security and other very secretive organizations trust Palantir and their overall data analytics and data mining capacities on top of their overall AI technology and their platforms. Their platforms are extremely secretive to the point where they have never had a data breach. And Palantir seems to pride themselves on that. I'd also want to add that the president of Palantir USG says this, and I quote, Every single day, HSI personnel use Palantir's software to execute their mission of investigating and disrupting major criminal networks that threaten our national security and undermine our critical infrastructure. He goes on to say, The positive impact of this work is real, and Palantir's software plays a critical role in making making it possible. We remain firmly committed to HSI's mission and the special agents and analysts driving this impact day in and out, end quote. So overall, I would think this is absolutely phenomenal news for Palantir Technologies, and I hope that they continuously increase, extend, and innovate on their current networks with companies like Homeland Security, so these companies can continuously extend their contracts and agreements and partnerships that they have with Palantir Technologies. So very, very good news for Palantir Technologies today. Now let's talk about why NEO's NIO stock is falling. And NEO is an electric vehicle company that is headquartered over in China. So this is a Chinese electric vehicle company. So if you're not comfortable with purchasing ADR shares, then this may not be the company for you. NEO's NIO stock right now is trading at $17.80. While professionals believe the company is worth anywhere between $24 and $66 over the next 12 months. But why are so many Chinese stocks falling? 
struggling right now, including NEO. Well, there's more than one reason for this. There's actually a plethora of reasons why Chinese stocks and stocks located over in China are falling right now. That's negatively impacting companies like Li Auto, Xpeng, and NEO, which are all electric vehicle companies. Now, I'm only going to highlight one in this article, and it's basically due to tough comments from President Biden on the Taiwan situation to where China is basically trying to and threatening to invade Taiwan. This would be catastrophic because Taiwan is very known for making semiconductors, which many electronics use. So if China ever overtook Taiwan, which is a United States ally, that would make the United States actually step in to some degree, which could cause a much larger conflict between the United States and China, which is why American investors are starting to pull out of Chinese stocks because the geopolitical climate is just getting way too hot right now. The Air Force Secretary, Frank Kendall, actually had to comment on this, and he said on Monday that an invasion, speaking about China invading Taiwan, would be, quote-unquote, an enormous enormous mistake in any event. He goes on to say, I believe that the Taiwanese people would fight, and I believe that we would assist them in some form. And he also adds that aggressor nations cannot always count on a short conflict or a fast takeover, which was displayed by Russia invading Ukraine. A lot of people, including myself, thought that Russia was just going to steamroll the smaller country. But luckily, Ukraine has defended itself very well over the last couple of months which is phenomenal due to the support that they received. In a similar way, I hope China has learned from this and I hope that they don't invade Taiwan because that would be catastrophic for the United States and the Chinese stock market. So basically due to broader political tensions between the United States and Chinese listed stocks, that's why Chinese stocks are falling right now, which would include NEO's NIO stock. Now, our last story we're going to go over is about Michael Burry and Tesla. And if you didn't know, Michael Burry is very famous famous for shorting and actually becoming extremely wealthy during the crash of 2007, 8, and 9, the housing crash, where he identified that a huge crash was coming, and he actually bet very heavily on that, and he turned out to be very right. Now, don't get me wrong, he's been wrong many, many times, but this is a guy who knows how to weigh his risk to reward. Now, I don't really follow him because I think he's very similar to the first stock reporter that we went over by blowing certain things out of proportion and exaggerating, and I don't trust their actual analysis of the current situation or the overall stock market. However, I do think he is right, and he has a good point, to where we could go into a negative recessionary spiral, and the stock market could crash even further. However, is Michael Burry shorting at Tesla? Well, surprisingly, he's not betting against Tesla at this current time. Right now, the TSLA share price is trading at $279 per share, while analysts believe the company's worth anywhere between $300 and $461 over the next year. Recently, Michael Burry disclosed that he isn't shorting Tesla, but he actually says that he should be betting against the automaker. And this means two things. It either means in the next couple of months, he will start a short position on Tesla, thus betting that the stock price of the TSLA shares are going to drop, or he's saying that he is waiting to short these shares, but he thinks that Tesla is too strong at the current time. And it could also mean a couple other things, but those those would be my top guesses, because Michael Burry has been extremely critical of Elon Musk's leadership and his electric vehicle company, even though Tesla is literally the top dog in terms of electric vehicles worldwide. Now, do I think the TSLA share price is trading at a high premium? Yes, yes I do. However, do I think Tesla is a phenomenal company? Yes. Yes, I do. Barry also published, and it said multiple times that he is bearish on Tesla, specifically in the first six months of 2021. However, right now, he's tending to pick his prey very strategically, and right now is not a good time to short Tesla shares, which is actually good news for Tesla. Now, Michael Burry is shorting a plethora of other companies, so if you want a video on that, I can go over some of the companies that he is shorting or selling as of right now. But I do want to highlight something that I actually do agree agree with him on on a very high level and that's where he says that the white collar jobs bubble is bursting right before our eyes. So what does he mean by that? What, what does that even mean? Well he said late on Sunday and he actually tweeted this and I quote, the white collar employment bubble is bursting right before our eyes and the longer it takes the redundancy to disappear the more permanent the decline in employment will be. 
work from home, which is WFH, will in time be seen as the culprit. So now let's break this quote down. So if the white collar employment bubble bursts, this is going to be very bad for the overall economy and the stock market because we want to actually see the stock market reflect the overall economy. Now, it's not a perfect reflection. It's more of a murky reflection, but it's still something that we need to keep in mind. So if this negatively impacts the economy, it's most likely going to negatively impact the stock market even more so. So what does he mean by this? Well, according to the recent unemployment data from the Labor Department, they suggest that the United States has actually been pretty resilient overall. So why is Michael Burry so negative right now? Well, the government data specifically in September showed that the United States added about 350,000 jobs last month, which has given the Federal Reserve a green light to increase interest rates to get inflation under control. And this is not the first time Michael Burry has pointed out some of the dangers in this trend that he is seeing in the macroeconomic environment. But again, why is this bad. Well, here's the rub. He points out that the market is mainly based on salaried professionals and white collar workers. And I quote from this Benzinga article that the bulk of whom took to remote working during the pandemic. So white collar workers are the ones that decided to go remote and it's leading a boost in overall productivity and wages. So wages are going up for white collar workers and this is causing inflation because to keep up with demand and supply, companies will have to increase their overall prices, which is then what? It's negatively impacting blue collar workers or workers that aren't increasing productivity or their wages because they have more physical jobs. This is making a quote unquote bifurcated jobs market exactly how Michael Burry has as predicted, where unskilled or semi-skilled blue-collar workers are in short demand, while the white-collar workers are increasing salaries and adding to overall inflation in a redundant sort of way. And this is putting more pressure on companies to increase their prices as white-collar workers continuously make higher wages and increase productivity, which is then hurting the blue-collar workers and the blue-collar class, which is going to reflect very negatively on the macroeconomic environment. So it's very unfair to leave them out of this overall macroeconomic inflation and how although white collar workers are going to survive this, it's going to really negatively impact the lower end of the spectrum, which is not going to be pretty for the overall stock market. So with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new, smash that like button for more videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next YT video.